In this video, I'm going to show you all you need to know about the Fender Custom Shop 1959 NOS Precision Bass. Hi guys, I'm Tyler. Thank you for tuning back into the channel once again. Today, I'm giving you an all you need to know review on this, which is my Fender Custom Shop 1959 NOS Precision Bass. Um, first thing first, if you enjoy my content, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button and notification bell too to keep up to date with what I'm doing. Um, so in this review, I'm going to give you um, a run through the specs. And then I'm going to give you some solo tones just so you can hear how it sounds on its own. Um, and then back to back head to head comparison with finger style, pick style and slap style. Um, so you can get an idea of how this bass sounds. Um, and then I'm just going to give you kind of my conclusions on the bass. It is my own bass, but I'm going to kind of try and review it as best as I can um, without being too biased, but it is one of my favourites. Um, and hopefully I can kind of run through that and give you an idea of why as well. Um, whilst this is kind of quite a niche review, being that it's a very specific model in the custom shop, hopefully I can also give you a bit of an insight as to why maybe you should look at a custom shop bass and whether you should or shouldn't, if you're at the right stage to be doing so. Um, and some of the benefits of going for a custom shop over just a standard Fender instrument. Um, so hopefully all that should be in this review. So first of all, I wanna just start off with the specs of the bass. So this bass is um, a classic Fender combination. We have an older body, um, a maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard. The maple neck is quarter sawn, um, so sawn against the grain, I believe, is what quarter sawn means. Um, and I think with the custom shop you are getting a slightly better class of wood. I think they reserve some of the better woods for the custom shop. I think that's one of the things you're getting in a custom shop instrument. Um, really beautiful rosewood fingerboard, um, really nice piece on that. Um, and that's kind of it from the wood perspective, very simple fender design. Um, the pickup in this base is the 1959-62 hybrid. Um, so it's got elements of the 59 style pickup and the 62. It sits somewhere between the two with regards to windings and the, the parts used. Um, but I think great sounding pickup and I'll talk a bit more of that, about that later. Um, we've got p bass volume and tone control as you'd expect. It has um, just a traditional Fender bent bridge style um, with the little ridges. Um, not maybe the best bridge you can get out there, very simple, simple design, but it does work um, and it's been used on fenders for years and years, so I can understand why they went with it and it is meant to be a 59 style base, um, so that's why this bridge is on there. When it comes to the headstock, we have reverse tuners, um, which is a little bit of an annoyance if I'm honest, it's, it's kind of annoying because um, I'll quite often, if I've been playing other basses, be used to tuning clockwise and actually to tune this bass up if you go counterclockwise. Um, but really good solid tuners on this bass, never been a problem um, as you'd expect from a bass in this category um, and then a bone nut as well. If we're talking about the ergonomics of this bass um, it has a 59 oval C shaped neck um, and these necks um, are a little bit interesting, they, they are oval in that they're kind of wider than the fretboard um, so they kind of feel like they, they, they fit in the hand a little bit wider than most necks do. Um, fairly slim down at the bottom of the neck actually, um, but as you come up further up towards the 12th fret, really fattens out, really thickens up and fills the hand. Um, and it's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to choose this bass is that it had a big neck on it. Um, and for me, I think that a big neck offers quite a lot of tone. Um, so that's one of the reasons I own this bass. Um, and I really like the neck on this bass, I really became accustomed to it um, and when I set out to have my own P-Bass that was kind of the perfect P-Bass for me, I always wanted a Fiesta Red P-Bass with tortoise shell guard and um, having a big neck on it was right up on the list um, and that's why I ended up with this bass. That's pretty much it from a spec perspective, um, 34 inch scale as you'd expect for a precision bass um, and when it comes to build quality it really is impeccable, um, there's absolutely you know, there's not a single thing with this bass that isn't perfect. Um, right down to the, the neck pocket, it's, uh, it's uh, a long way away from some of the, the other fenders that we've seen over the years, you know, 70s fenders or whatever. This is really a properly designed, built instrument where the neck pocket aligns perfectly with the neck. Um, I think that's what you're getting really, it is a proper custom shop experience in terms of 
the money you're paying does pay off in the build quality. One thing I should say is that this has a nitrocellulose finish on the body um, and on the neck as well. Um, so as you play it more, the more it will age. Uh, and this has got you know a fair few dings and things from it because the nitrocellulose finish is um, that kind of finish. It does take damage quite easily, but I think you get a much more resonant base for the fact that it is nitro and it's not a thick layer of plastic around the base. Um, so I'm a big fan. Um, and I quite like the fact that I've owned this base from you and all the, the marks and things are on it are from gigs I've done and they're all kind of really good memories. Um, so for that reason, the Night Story Lays kind of adds to it for me um, and makes it more of a personal instrument than maybe some others. So those are the specs of the instrument. Let me know your thoughts so far in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit that like button. Um, now I'm just going to run you through some solo tones um, that you can get from this bass. Um, so this is the volume all the way up on full and a tone as well. And this is the tone halfway. And this is the tone rod all the way off. So those are some of the solo tones from this bass. Now I'm just going to go straight into the head-to-head -head comparison um, of the different, three different styles and different tone settings. Let me know which is your favourite setting in the comments down below.
So now you've heard the base, you've had the specs and heard the head to head comparison as well. Let me know your thoughts on this base in the comments below and also your favorite setting from the head to head comparison. At this point, I'm just gonna kind of run you through why I chose this base um, and give you my conclusions on not only this base, but also buying from the Fender Custom Shop as well and why you might wanna choose that over just a standard Fender. Ultimately, this is a very simple base. I think the fact that it's you know, not taking me long to run through any of the specs or the tones on this base um, are kind of an example of that. But that might make you think, well, why would you go for a custom shop version of something that's so simple? Um, and for me, I think you can get a lot of the tone and sound from, you know, just a standard Fender instrument. Um, but there are a few things that come stock on the custom shop that made me want to go for this base. Um, I do think that when I bought this base, I compared it to the original series. Um, the 60s in Lake Placid Blue, which is a lovely bass. I think those are killer basses. Um, and for me, between the two, there was just a little bit more nuance in the pickup with this bass. It wasn't wound as hot, um, but I felt like with the tone control, there was a slight larger range of versatility. You could get a really dark sound, as you've heard in the demo, but also you could get you know quite a bright sound with quite a lot of definition and, and detail in the sound. I felt like that was something that wasn't quite as possible. Um, with the 60s bass. As much as it was good and punchy, I think I'd enjoy it live. I think when you come to kind of a recording experience or situation, there's just a little bit more detail in the sound. So really those are really tiny details in the sound that I think for most people you might kind of gloss over. Um, but when I had them both next to each other, I felt like it was worth it to have that detail there and to be able to kind of roll it out and roll it off with the tone control than to not have it um, and have a more kind of central tone. Um, so. For me, that's one of the main reasons I went with this bass. Of course, you can add that pickup. You can add the same pops into another precision bass. Um, but buying off the shelf and having that head-to-head -head comparison, that's one of the things that really sold me on this bass. Um, and the other thing is the neck. Um, the neck profile um, is pretty unique to this model. Um, and I think that's the thing when it comes down to custom shop. If you want something that you can't get in the standard Fender range, that's when you should be looking at a custom shop bass. And if you want your kind of one, you know, version of bass, the ultimate version of that bass, um, and it's a Fender, I can't see why you wouldn't, you know, try custom shop designs, custom shop neck shapes, um, and find the one that works for you. Because at this level and this price, you are looking for something that is very specific to you. It's not meant to be a mass market bass that suits everyone. That's what the professional is about. That's what the elites are about. Those are kind of designs and neck profiles that suit most people and are great sounding basses, really solid um, and you know high-end basses. And for me, the only reason to go to the custom shop is if you want that something more. And I did, I wanted a certain neck profile. I wanted a bigger, chunkier neck profile than I could get on the majority of the standard fenders that are made. Um, and the custom shop was where I found it. I always wanted a proper fender, um, Fender P, that was a, a real fender. Um, and this was kind of my solution to that. Um, so I could totally understand if loads of you are in the comments saying why would you spend that money on you know something that is just a P-Base at the end of the day, it's just two pieces of wood bolted together. Um, but I think if you're looking for a specific something um, and you're at the stage where you know in your playing that you want a certain neck profile, the thing for neck profiles with me is that they make me play differently. A bigger neck makes me play less and that's what I want from a P-Base. I want to do the really solid foundational work and not be caught up in trying to play too many notes and anything like that. So for me, that's the biggest differentiator. I choose a bass based on how it makes me feel and how I then play that bass based on its feel. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. I personally think this is one of the finest precision basses I've ever played. Um, and I've spent a lot of hours with it, which obviously helps, makes me feel very comfortable with it. Um, but in terms of the craftsmanship, it's really a bass that's going to last a long time. And I think going for something like a custom shop over an original Fender bass makes it you know, more likely that it's going to last a longer time. Um, it has the features and feel of an older instrument, um, but it's got you know, slightly more modern manufacturing techniques, um, and those are quite likely to make this bass last a lot longer. I've had vintage basses and tried to use them on gigs for a long time, and they just feel a little bit too delicate, they're too fragile. Um, so I think the custom shop also offers a really good option for people that you, know, you want that vintage feel and vintage instrument, um, but 
don't want to take it out on the road or it is a little bit fragile and kind of should be kept just for the studio, those kind of things. So those are my thoughts on this, the Fender Custom Shop 1959 Precision Bass. I recommend it to, well, people that know that you want these specs. Um, and I don't kind of broadly recommend Custom Shop Basses for everybody. I do think they are kind of the pinnacle of what you can get from a Fender. Um, but the Fender makes so many guitars and basses that it is a case-by-case -case basis. And I think the Custom Shop just reduces the chances of getting a lemon. Um, and the choice of woods they put in, the effort in the craftsmanship, it's more likely that you'll find your base quicker if you're looking at the custom shop. So hopefully that gives you an idea of my experience and thoughts on the custom shop and this specific Fender 1959 base. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I'm really keen to hear your thoughts of the custom shop and your experience with other Fender Precision bases. Um, what is your current P base of choice? If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button and notification bell um, to keep up to date with all my gear reviews. They're all in this kind of format. Um, so if you like this and want to see more, hit that subscribe button and you will definitely be seeing more of these. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram um, and all the other social media that will be linked below in the description. And I will see you in the next video.